major depressive disorder, bipolar disorder, uh, anxiety is a huge one. People that can work with borderline personality disorder. Mental health affects can affect anyone, any age. So, so we're working with people um, sort of around 20 and, and right up into their 70s currently. At least 60% of my clients would have a mental health issue of some description. I work with um, some people that own their own home outright and I've also, I'm also working with some people that are still sleeping rough. We deal quite often with the hardest of the hard of the hard people, you know, that have been rejected from a lot of services because they're square pegs trying to fit into a round model or, you know, the round holes. At least 80%, I think, if, if not almost everyone. It's, it's one of the reasons I think that people can quite often end up on the streets because of a mental health issue, either diagnosed and not treated properly or completely undiagnosed. They're not able to maintain normal facets of society, pay the bills, maintain a tenancy, keep a job, get Centrelink benefits so that they're getting money. A lot of the guys that we work with are bumped from place to place because there's, there's not a, you know, a real understanding and because people can't always articulate clearly what they're experiencing and it, you know, it's a, it can be a private thing as well, it's, um, it's very difficult to maintain, for them to maintain their tendency. Basically not being linked with the, the, the proper supports, especially uh, medical like GPs, um, uh, counselling services, e even medication. People don't have access to medication because they don't have a GP so so they're really in a pretty bad space and so you're at a much greater risk if you're homeless than if, than if you have somewhere you can call a home. Lots of documentation and systems that a regular person would be you know navigate quite easily it's very difficult for a person with a mental health illness they don't comprehend forms that need to be filled out or, in, or appointments that they need to go to um, or processes that are involved in getting into the system and getting the care that's required which is why we try and provide that link for them. The reason Partners in Recovery was created was because it was identified there were lots of gaps in the, in the mental health care system so a lot of people do fall through the cracks they, they just don't get the support and, and services that they need. So that's why people can live their whole life basically not getting the help that they need. So we we created to try and bridge that gap. Just like you and I, you know, everyone just wants, wants to be able to be safe and well and to participate in society to the best of their ability. Our role is to basically link people with supports and services to assist them. Um, in day-to-day -day life and, and to get the help they need basically around mental, their mental health. There are a lot of great services already in place, so there's the PIR program, there's the HOT team, the Homelessness Outreach team who we work with extensively. We actually have a meeting with them every day um, to discuss clients that we're engaging with or that they're engaging with. As a whole we've tried the one-size-fits-all model and it it, doesn't, it just doesn't wait for everybody. We also work with different health teams, mental health, um, GPs, um, home support teams around helping people maintain tenancies. Just talk to someone and, and just put their hand up. Um, you know, we, we're here to help. Mental illness can strike anyone anywhere.